James was born with autism in 1899, and by the time of his death in 1977, he had created over 20,000 pieces of artwork. He was known, or he is known, around the world. His passion for art, I believe, helped him to overcome the barriers of autism, the lack of any art supplies that he had, and ridicule from others. Uh, the barriers of autism. He was sent to the Idaho School for the Deaf and Blind, which was neither deaf nor blind, he was autistic. Autism wasn't really discovered until the 1940s, so for the first 40 years of his life, he was basically retarded. Uh, so he went to the school of the deaf and blind. They couldn't do anything with him. He, he was unable to learn. So his family took him back, and um, they built a, a workshop for him outside of their property. He spent a lot of time in the workshop. He, he, he created his own alphabet, which was symbols that his family could understand. It was a, it was a family language. Uh, they were poor. Back in those days when you were poor, you didn't have any materials. They lived in a small farming community. There was nothing around. They used a, he used stove soot and his own saliva. He, he, he made a little twigs and with sharp ends, and he, he would uh, mix the saliva with the soot in a, in a mason jar can. So he had his graphite so he could draw his, his artwork. His paper he used was food labels, matchbooks, receipts, anything you can find around the house. The ridicule from the other children, they, they taunted him. They vandalized his workshop. They tear up his pencils, throw his throw his you know desk, mess his desk up, take his artwork out to the irrigation ditch and you know throw him in there. So in conclusion, despite the problems associated with having autism, my uncle's artwork sells for as much as thirty six thousand dollars in exhibits in museums, Museum of Modern Art, the American Folk Art Museum, Whitney Museum in New York, Chicago, Idaho, just to name a few. So uh, not only was my Uncle James autistic, but he was artistic as well.